definitely not the starters. You're on the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Happy Friday! It is the end of the bench. I had to think about it. Welcome. You got us on 100.7 The Score, double tsportsnetwork.com, and the mobile app brought to you by Happy State Bank. We're going all the way until noon, live with you for three hours. We'll be here in the first United Bank studio. You can reach us in a couple different ways. You can call us on the Visual Edge IT hotline, 806-771-0973. Or you can hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Thoughts, comments, questions, score predictions. Uh, We'll take all of that there. And uh, you can watch us in the app, just like you can watch us on Fox 34 News now. Nope, not for the first two hours. But you can at 11. You can also watch us on YouTube the whole time. This is a different seat than I'm used to. It's throwing me yeah, off. Well, I think technically you'd be surprised at how much of this show you can watch on Fox 34 News now. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I... Yeah. There's 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 a portion in there that's not on, but I think right now might actually be on. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, hello, Fox 34 News now. You have us... Uh, not for a long time, but for a good time. That's what they say. Yeah. Clint Scott, the Jared Zabransky of Raymar, David Collier, Lucas White behind the glass taking care of us. Gentlemen, how are we doing? I was good until you said the Jared Zabransky <laughs> line, <laughs> but that's okay. I'll be Ian Johnson. No, I'm not going to be Ian Johnson. Do you even know They're who winners. Ian Johnson is? He was the running back, okay, right? I'm just he checking. was the running back We can't proposed. name anybody else on the team, though. No, 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 no. We did that earlier this week. Somebody was – I don't know if they were asking – if we even knew any more Colorado Buffalo names, so we just started rattling names off uh-huh. just to prove that we could. We're pretty much done with anybody from other than Kellen Moore and LeGarrette Le- Blunt, but that's it. Are oh, you just doing like all-time Boise yeah. State guys? Yeah. But yeah. I, well, from, from that team, I don't know anybody else. Yeah. Nor do I want to. Well, why did you to bring be that fair, up? I don't know. I just we're just having trying to have a good oh, old sorry. Friday show. I mean, you asked to <laughs> do this show with me because you love the show so much. I do love the show. Big fan. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm. I'm happy to be back. I like. Uh, you know, this is where I was first dipping my toes in the yeah. in the hosting water. So it's nice to come back, and it's uh, nice to see the friendly face behind the glass, Lucas White. Uh, did you win any money last night? I did. I won a good amount of money. Could have been more if Zay Flowers would have gotten targeted more but mm-hmm. apparently i guess jackson likes wallace and bateman more than flowers and johnson who they just traded for and they only threw it to him i think twice he caught one but i think mm-hmm. he got targeted twice so. i mean yeah i can understand uh why you would be mad at them for throwing at people that scored points and helped them win <laughs> on their way to 35 points <laughs> spoken like a true Prize pick. Uh, hey, I said that yeah. the Bengals would cover the six. Yeah. <laughs> Again, he goes so, straight to the number. He didn't. <laughs> spoken like someone who didn't really, you know, care how they did it. He just wanted them hey, to cover the number. Yeah, uh huh. That's all right. I did the same thing. I've got Lamar and fantasy. So I, was, I, I had Jamar Chase. Yeah, yeah. I had Jamar night. Chase on my oh, fantasy team. So. Mm, mm. How was uh, everyone? Are you a? Uh, this is going to be really bad of me because I've lost track of who is and who isn't. In I'm our not. Fan- I no. didn't think you were. No, I retired from bad. fantasy football. Yeah. They drug me out of, of retirement. Right. I, I uh, kind of Brett Favre. I said I was done, and then I came back and played for two teams. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's, it's fun. Probably won't do it again next year. <laughs> I already stopped paying attention. No, yeah. It's... It was just kind of a bold-faced lie. I was just like, I wasn't. I haven't looked at the lineup. I haven't looked to see who was in or out. And then I was still like, was like, oh yeah, hey, I've hit him in fantasy. He's doing pretty good for me. Yeah, <laughs> that was a pretty good night. Uh, you have Optimum Game Day live tomorrow, starting at 7 a.m. It is the biggest local hosted show out there. There's also Fox Big Noon kickoff. Uh, that should be fun. But you can catch us outside of the Frazier Alumni Pavilion. Uh, yeah, 7 a.m. all the way until an hour before kickoff, and then afterwards you can hear the Double T 97.3 Coors Light post game show with one. Rob Bro. Uh Collier, we'll uh dive into this game plenty, but right now 
What is your gut telling you? How are you feeling about this matchup with the old Buffaloes? Well, when I made my prediction that you can see on double T sports network.com. Great pitch. Yeah. It's a thank professional you. Move right there. Um, I, I picked Colorado to win in a one score game. And then I was doing stuff for another small pregame show that'll be on tomorrow that I do at my other job. Um, and I, I totally forgot about the Nebraska game and how much Nebraska, mm-hmm. I, I know that's the beginning of the year and things are different, but how much they dominated that game. And it made me feel a little more optimistic because mm-hmm. of obviously the connection between the two schools. So I genuinely have no earthly idea. I still think Colorado with all of those wide receivers and probably not enough guys to cover them do get the win. But then I look at that. I mean, they scored 10 points against Nebraska, mm-hmm. and that was on the road as well, right? That mm-hmm. was in that was in Lincoln. Yeah. And they were just – it, it felt like they were eaten up by the environment. But I'll say this. I do, I do think with what you started, I think that's a very different Colorado team. Yes. Um, because I, I think even if you go to another game that they struggled in, if they play that North Dakota State game with this team right now that's improved, yeah. I think they win that game. I, I mean, I don't think it's like a – 90 to 10 sort yeah. of game but I, I think they win that a little easier than what it ended up being there uh yeah so it, it's it'll be interesting as far as the can you get that Colorado though that yeah. was in yeah. in Nebraska because that would be nice and I, I think you're gonna have to have some of that of just what happened in the game if you are going to beat Colorado because you look at a game that they lost close one but to Kansas State mm-hmm. you got sacked a bunch yep Nebraska, they got sacked a bunch. You go to a game that they should have lost and pulled one out if it Baylor. wouldn't have been from Victory Sakar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just Dave Aranda. What are you doing, dude? Uh, they sacked him a lot. And part of that is that I do think he, he being Shadur Sanders, is such a good creator and such a good, a good ad-libber when he's under pressure that sometimes he still holds on to the ball a little bit too much mm-hmm. and and so you really are going to have to have a, a, a continuation of what you saw last week as far as facing that like instant pressure and getting some wins on the defensive line and hitting home on blitzes but also like not having just complete breakdowns in the secondary and with your team being inconsistent if it's the team that showed up in aims defensively I think you'll have more than a chance to win this mm-hmm. game if it's the defense that was here against Baylor or even the defense that was here against Cincinnati in a game that you won at home, it could be a long after yeah. it could be a long afternoon defensively. Yeah. So uh, uh, there's a lot of variables in that, and that's what's just so hard to tell. But I think there's a lot of teams in the Big 12 right now are saying, which version of us is going to yeah. be here on Saturday? Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, that and Taj being able to run the football, I talked to a guy that works for the paper in Boulder, and he was like, Hey, DJ Giddens, they they compared Taj Brooks to him and, you know, maybe a little bit different, but just difficult to get down. And he's the mm-hmm. only guy that's rushed for over 100 yards against him this mm-hmm. season. So there's plenty of reasons to be optimistic. And certainly last weekend helped that quite a bit because I think a lot of us, if that would have gone the other way, we would have just been talking about men's basketball playing tonight. Northwestern State. <laughs> we'll get to some of that next when we tell you what you need to know. Don't miss it. You got to sign 100.7 the score. Definitely not the starters. You're on the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 the score. All right, first name Tom, last name Foolery. Nice to have you here on the end of the bench on 100.7 the score. Clint Scott, Davey O'Collier, Lucas White behind the glass taking care of us. You shrunk. I know. <laughs> it looks really bad on the TV. <laughs> Jamie and I did that one time. Just just for our own amusement yeah. and I felt like you know like whenever you have like a class project or something when you're in third or fourth grade and it's like hey we're gonna do a fake news segment and it felt like third grade news it's the only way I can describe it yeah yeah hit us up on the H flooring center chat line thoughts comments questions score predictions you can also call us on the visual edge IT hotline 806-771-0973 if you call that number Lucas White will tell you what your Taco Bell order should be today we are live from the first United Bank studio until 12 o'clock uh, we got this on the Yates flooring center chat line uh, morning ruined that from bullfighter no. as soon as I started talking which is fair 
Good morning, bullfighter. <laughs> he, it's just a double whammy for him. So, <laughs> is that our oh? Is that our tag team no, double, whammy? double whammy? Oh man, yeah. we can have wham as our walkout music. <laughs> Wake me up. <laughs> Got to play that uh, on the way back. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Very bright. Pink, when you show up pink. to the ring, you're going to want to go, go. Are you going to wear like a wrestling singlet or are you just going to go with the trunks? I think I'm just going to use the outfit from Faith of George Michael. The leather jacket, yeah. the blue jeans, the boots, the white t-shirt. Yeah. You pick whichever one you want. Okay. I'll go I'll go through the, uh, <laughs> I'll go through the catalog and find whatever... Uh, Shirtless is basically what you're going, though. You're going shirtless with jeans and a leather jacket. Well, I thought, didn't he have like a white t shirt under? No, his? just go shirtless. It, it's wrestling, for goodness sakes. Let's That's go. true. <laughs> wrestling and pools are the same thing for me. I'm wearing a shirt. No, but, I'm just kidding. I was a, I was a shirt kid growing yeah, up. Pool, when I went, yeah, I was yeah. a shirt kid. Yeah. Nobody wanted to see the tub of ice cream on top of these flamingo legs. Uh, good morning, guys. Did the rain mess up your streaming of the shows? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, but also good morning. Yeah, when I listened to the stream of uh, Chuck this morning, he he sounded healthy. <laughs> Is that what you're listening for? <laughs> In a medical sense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to live up to the guy that uh, co-hosts in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Doctor. 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 Uh, Viva seventy three said we get two hours on channel nine. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. <laughs> it was different the last time I was yeah, here. Well, it's been a long time. I think we not many people know that. So, mm-hmm. well, we do now. Uh, old Razzle Dazzle was an, a, a very important question. I'm glad this was asked. Uh, any update on the donkey egg throw? So I still have to pay up for my punishment. I have not forgotten about it. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm excited to do it, but I am still willing to do it. Uh, with all of the busy schedules and kids playing sports and stuff, I'm thinking that this might be more difficult to get done than what we had originally planned yeah. and so we have talked a little bit behind the scenes we haven't fully nailed it down but we've talked about just having all of you guys throw eggs oh at me. wow i like that idea yeah I mean, it just yeah i'm not we'll, we'll i'm just, not gonna duck out of it we'll all line i might up. duck out of the egg throws but i'm not gonna duck out of the punch in general. <laughs> we all line up and you stand right by haxton's car and we just yeah i'm sure he'll eggs. love that <laughs> <laughs> no, you, we need to do it. Could you imagine if we did it in front of Jamie's car? We would all be fired. Yes. Uh, that, that seems like just even, instantly gone. Even better, you have to lay on the hood of Jamie's car, <laughs> and we just throw them up, and you have to watch them fall and hit you. Or you choose to roll out of the way. Do I roll out of the way and get fired, or do I just take this? Uh... Or do I stay on the car and him know I was on the car and still get fired? <laughs> The worst white snake video I've ever seen. Well, uh, yeah. This on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, good morning, folks. Is there going to be a flyby tomorrow? I certainly hope so. I hope some C30 or B2 roars through the stadium. I'm not aware. I, I'm not sure. I can probably Because I thought there was going to be one for Baylor, and I don't know if there was clouds or something that messed with that or if that was called off. or. I, th- I think it was probably called off because yeah. of the weather. Because right. they still recognize the uh right so the pilots I, so. I hope so because I, I thought I'll, I'll say this this would be another Chuck Hines question I can go ask him here in the building I thought the original plan was the last three home games there was going to be a fly over planned for all three yeah I will double check on that but the memory serves correct that's what I thought it was uh and uh this on the H flooring center chat line to uh old razzle dazzle from bobby hot dogs he asked are you going to put your 250 towards uh, renovations and upgrades down at the snake farm old razzle dazzle one of our winners you can also win a cash prize if you take in a secret word at 10 45 today here with us so uh, we'll do that a little later on that's right i heard that yesterday mm-hmm. and then they even said his name yeah that watch i thought oh yeah i thought you weren't supposed to do that I wanted to. Uh, I gotta find that. It's supposed to be a secret. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take a look at the calendar, shall we? I guess. <laughs> Your daily look at what's happening in the world of sports, birthdays, and holidays. Let's check the calendar. Do you like uh, to go first with birthdays? Do I go with holidays? Uh, holidays first. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is the choice holiday. It's Cook Something Bold and Pungent Day. 
Seems like a lot of his diet can be described as bold and pungent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, National Cappuccino Day. I'm in. Big fan. Mm -hmm. I'll drink it, but I'm typically just black coffee. But Mm -hmm. I'm an iced coffee kind of guy. That's what I like to drink. I have a mix. I have iced black coffee from home right over there. So it's the best of both worlds for you guys. There you go. Why do you like coffee cold? I'm just asking for a friend. Uh, well, I, I like the flavor of it. And here's the thing. Other thing is I always make too much coffee. When I started doing this, I make way too much coffee in the morning. And I was like, well, I just feel like I'm, and I could just make less coffee, but yeah. I just don't do that. No. It's like coffee and pasta. I'm going to feed a, a family of 12 with it when I make it. And, uh, so I just started saving it and I really like it. I don't do it cold every single morning, but probably like one cold, too hot. Probably that rotation. Yeah. Yeah. I just, for whatever reason, I don't know. I don't yeah. like it. Hmm. Oh, well. Uh, here's my holiday. It's National Dunce Day. Shout Kirsten? out. Kirsten Dunce? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Shout out an Ashley today. It's National Ashley Day. It's a National Parents as Teacher Day. A homeschool? That's what I'm going with. Yeah. Uh, like talk Hexons. Mo- Hexons. Mom's a teacher or was a teacher, so. Oh, see, if it's that route, if you're the kid, you probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Hexen's mom's a teacher, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, used, maybe used to be, but she was a teacher. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tickle those ivories. It's World Pianist Day. Yeah. Some say pianist. Yeah. Not you. Not me. Talk money day. And uh, let's get you one more. It's uh, World Town Planning Day. Boy, just a lot of bangers today on holidays. Collier? Yeah. Um, well, let's, let's follow that up on birthdays, I guess. Um, happy birthday to Ashton Hampton, a member of the Texas Tech football team. Uh, we'll start there. Uh, Gordon Ramsey. Idiot sandwich. I'm Fif- also thinking of South Park. Oh, my God, it's Gordon Ramsey. Uh, 58 years old for Gordon Ramsey today. Oh, the, I I don't know if I would have guessed his age correctly. He would have gone because higher? well, he just seems like his entire career he's been seventy five years old, yeah. and so that throws me off. And I think I would have guessed younger. No, see, I would have, I would have guessed in the sixties. Yeah, I think I would have said like right at fifty. Um, Tara Reed in a lot of things, but also as you mentioned, Sharknado fame. Yeah, uh-huh. um, forty nine years old. Hacks I would have the- guessed her age wrong too. I would have went the other direction. Now, see, I would have gone the other. I would have went. You would have went down. Yeah. Um, you don't know who Parker Posey is, but uh, she's 56 years old. Do you know who Parker Posey is? Mm, no. Yeah. A great name of alliteration. Yes, exactly. Uh, Days and Confused. She's, uh, I think she's in, you ever see Best of Show? The movie Best of Show? <laughs> the dog some show? Some sort of dog movie? Yeah. It's like a spoof, a, a mockumentary of. Oh, I'm in now that you said the word mockumentary. It's got uh, Stifler's mom in it too, and you're a big fan of those commercials that we you stare. It's my fault. Um, These two are still running. Yeah, they are. I don't listen. Uh, Giancarlo <laughs> Stanton, 35 years old. <laughs> David Muir uh, of ABC News, 51. Mary Hart, uh, you might know her as a Dodgers fan. She sits at Dodgers games all the time. Okay. Yeah. Any Ashleys today? No Ashleys, but Sam mm-hmm. Bradford celebrating his 37th birthday oh. today as well. Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. It's just reactionary. It is, uh, it's not just reactionary. It's the end of the bench on 100.7 <laughs> The Score. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Welcome back to the frozen tundra of the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score. Clint Scott, David Collier, Lucas White, and over on the Visual Edge IT hotline, I believe Justin is on. Justin. Yep, I'm here, buddy. What's up, Justin? How are you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful, Black, and how are you? I am great. Uh, we voted to make you go first. I heard the last time you were on that you actually beat everybody, and I assume got a prize pack, right? Uh, no. Oh, okay, so you lied to I me. I haven't got my last three prize packs. <laughs> he, there okay. you go. He hasn't got his last three <laughs> prize packs. I think uh, Haxon's in uh, charge of the prize packs. It's just the sheer joy of whipping choices, but or... You know, anybody. Every yeah. now and then, Collier when he gets snarky. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I definitely lost that one. What do you mean every now and then every he gets snarky? snarky? He's just in snark <laughs> mode all the time. All right, let's uh, dive right in. We'll start with some Big 12 matchups. Justin, West Virginia is at Cincinnati. Who do you got? <laughs> well, my buddy, Dr. John Edward Kessel, who graduated from WVU. We were in grad school together. He said, you can never pick anybody that will burn their own furniture <laughs> for fun. So I got to go Cincy. <laughs> That's a good way to live life. Uh, Lucas, who do you got? Well, I went to high school with some people that like to burn furniture, so they went to West Virginia. And so I'm going to burn furniture with my friends and pick West Virginia to win this one. Okay. I will take the Bearcats. I will also take the Bearcats and uh, have Lucas on Burnt Couch Island over there. (laughs) That's funny. Uh, This game played in Arrowhead. Iowa State is technically in a road game at Kansas, although this is as neutral side as neutral side can be. Uh, Justin, you have the Jayhawks or the Cyclones winning on Saturday? Now you should that, have the point the spread Cyclones. on this one. Yeah, what is the point spread? It's three. Is that what you want to do, straight no, up? Or? this is straight up because oh, Iowa up. State's only a three-point favorite. Or okay. Road. okay. I think no, it Iowa came State down to two and a half. Yeah, it's three right now. Yeah. No, yeah. Iowa State. Okay, all of these – well, not all of them. We'll do one with the spread, but – the first four we'll do all straight up because all of these spreads are super close. Close, yeah. Lucas, I'm gonna take Iowa State as well in this one. Do yeah, I. I'm taking Iowa State. <gasps> That's why I did the point spread because there's no way you're picking Kansas. No, I will take Iowa State. State. Yeah, yeah, I'll take Iowa State. Okay, that was fun. Uh, UCF is at Arizona State. Justin, you're taking the Sun Devils or the Knights? I will take the Sun Devils. Lucas? Arizona State. This is an interesting one. This is also a very close point spread. not playing, though, is he? Did he get hurt? I, he wasn't. He was supposed to be out, and I don't know if that has changed at all. And they just got Levitt back, and then he went out. Uh, or Yeah, Scadaba went out. So that'll be that'll be an interesting watch there. Yeah, I'll still go Arizona State. Oh, but. man. I, I would really prefer to know if Cam is playing in that game. We have no time. Um, we have so many more picks to get through. Um, Stop I, looking I, I will go with Arizona State. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you guys all – you all took Arizona yes. State, huh? Man, I thought we might be mixed on this one. UCF uh, is awful. I don't – You go. Be, you got to pick UCF. I don't like want to be on the island. Nope. I'm, I am, already have uh, eggs coming my way. We're going to try to avoid that. We'll do a Sun Devil sweep here. Uh, let's pick this one with the spread because TCU, Justin, is a 10.5-point favorite at home against Oklahoma State. Massive line here. Who covers? <laughs> yeah. Oklahoma State's going to cover. I got to – I mean, the old Oklahoma, the, the old Aggies got to do it sometime. So they got to cover. Lucas, do you agree? I'm going to take TCU <laughs> and the points in this one. Uh, I say this every single week. Mike Gundy can't start 0-7 in Big 12 play, can he? <laughs> so I'll go with Oklahoma State. You've said he can't start 0-7 every week? Uh, well, I've said 0-6 <laughs> and 0-5. He and can start 0-7. It. They just need to be within 10 points. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> Uh, I, this was kind of a, one of those situations where you're like, hey, you guys order first and I'll make a decision. And it's still – I'm still going back and forth. I think I'm going to stick with Lucas. I, I think TCU will win by exactly 11 points. Uh, let's go to the NFL, shall we? Oh, nope, sorry. We have one more Big 12 one. This one is also straight up, even though it probably shouldn't be, but here we are anyways. When it's a rivalry game and it's the Holy War, you throw the records out the window. It is BYU and Utah at Utah. Justin, who wins this game? Going straight up, BYU. 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 Okay, BYU. Oh, you chicken. (laughs) You're such a chicken. I was going to go last. I was hoping other people would do that. Let's go to the NFL. Detroit is at Houston. You can hear this game, 100.7 the score, 630. Justin, you have the Lions or the Texans? 
My old buddy Dan Campbell. We're going with the Lions. Lucas? Too many question marks with Houston, so I'm going to take Detroit in this one. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think of somebody. Uh, oh, my old buddy Billy Sims. I'll go with the the Lions. <laughs> I'll actually go on an I'll go on an island here. Yeah. I'll say that Houston gets a. This is probably dangerous. Houston gets a, a statement win, if you will, without their best two receivers. Justin Pittsburgh is at Washington. Steelers or the Commanders here. Commanders. Lucas. My wife would not let me in the house if I don't pick Washington, so I'm going <laughs> to go with the Commanders. Oh, they look good. They do look they good. Do. And I did pick them to win the NFC East. Hmm. They can still do that if they don't win I this know, game. That's what I know. I'm uh-huh. well aware. Um, Just making sure you knew the math there. I don't like this game. Can we pick a different one? Nope. Okay, we're going with this one. Uh, What's the weather like? I'm going to go with the Steelers. I'm going to go with the Steelers as well. Yeah. So there's a there's another split. Let's go to some NCAA basketball. Uh, we have some top 25 matchups featuring some Big 12 teams tonight. Justin, ninth-ranked North Carolina at first-ranked Kansas. Who do you have in this matchup? At Kansas. At Kansas. Well, then we got to go Kansas. Sorry, sorry. I could hear the disappointment in your voice. When you I'm sorry, man. I mean, I like you, Viking, but. No, I get it. I would expect disappointment from everybody. They uh, pick the, uh, well, except for one of us. We pick the Jayhawks. Lucas? Do it. I'm going to take Kansas. They just got too many good transfers in. Kansas is going to win the national title. They're going to beat North Carolina tonight, too. No, they're not because they came in as the preseason top-ranked team, and that doesn't happen. It's going to happen this year. Uh, okay, so there's a Kansas uh, clean sweep there. How about Auburn at – well, it's not at Houston. This game, this is one of these confusing ones. It's Auburn and Houston. It's technically a neutral site game, but they're playing at the Rockets facility there at the Mattress Firm Battleground 2K24. Uh, do you have the Auburn Tigers or the Houston Cougars, Justin? Oh, Bruce Pearl's getting a little too fat and happy down there in Auburn. So <laughs> I'm going to go with Houston. <laughs> Lucas? If I don't want either team to win, can I just avoid <laughs> this pick? You just want to <laughs> give it as a loss. Yeah, we'll take. we'll let you do that. I, oh, gosh. I mean, Houston's going to win this, but, yeah. Is, okay. he, is Houston going to win this? Yeah, I don't know. I think this is a toss-up. Yeah, I don't – I honestly don't know much about Houston I, other than their number four, and I know their head coach, coach somewhere one time. That's enough. Um, <laughs> you know – hey, you know uh, you know Miles Uzon. He's over there. He's good. Um, I, I, will go with, uh, I will go with Auburn. Why not? Come on. I don't like that we're teaming up so much. Well, we haven't just one time, just to let yeah, you know. Yeah, that's one yeah. too many. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take uh, I'll take the Tigers as well. I think they'll get a little bit of an upset win. Last but not least, Justin, uh, if you want to give us a score, you can as well. Texas Tech and Colorado tomorrow at the Jones. Let's see, three touchdowns and two field goals for Tech. I, I can't do the math. Tech wins. <laughs> 21 plus 6, 27 to 24. And we're hitting a break. So just real quick, Justin, we'll get your tiebreaker as well. I need the men's team score tonight for basketball against Northwestern State. How much do they put up? Uh, 92. 92. All right. To like 54. I like it. I'll take it. Justin, good luck. I hope you <laughs> – I, I, think I, hope, I hope all three of you lose because I don't want to be on the wheel again. But uh, good luck and thanks for calling. For you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. All right, thanks, Justin. Have a good one. All right, y'all too. Uh, we will uh, round out our picks real quick through the break and just burn through them since we just have two left. It is uh, the end of the bench on 100.7. The score. Playing time is not required. This is the End of the Bench Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Eddie, shout out Signature Stag, our clothing sponsor here at Raymar. And, well, they're doing their best to make us look good. We uh, we fight it a little bit. Not the uh, clothes, it's great, but we just uh, we try to pull it off the best we can. Yeah. 
Keep it on, though. Don't pull it off. <laughs> You're not in danger of okay. that. Okay. Are you worried about that? I was. You worried about hearing, like, tarps off and you look no. over and I'm Mia Hamming in the corner <laughs> or something? <laughs> Uh, let's round out just real quick our picks, uh, us three. We, we have Justin's in. Good luck to him. Uh, but for the three of us, we still have to give our pick and score for Texas Tech versus Colorado and then our tiebreaker for the men's score tonight for basketball. Lucas, who do you have tomorrow between Colorado and Texas Tech? So this is going to be different from what I said yesterday because I was under pressure and time was ticking. But I'm going to say 31-24 to 24, Colorado. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I I think I'm sticking with what I did on the website. Uh, 34 to 31 Colorado. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what I went with. I will stick with my prediction from the website and three take Thursday as well. Uh, I I think we're all in the same boat of this is going to be a close game. Um, I think Texas Tech is going to pull this one out. I think you're going to get another Joey McGuire signature win uh, and get one at home. I'll take a 35 to 34 <laughs> win over, to, <laughs> over Colorado. Yeah. I, we're, I, we're all, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'll be honest. I, I think I'm more inclined to go with pick, picking Texas Tech at the moment, mm-hmm. but I'll stick with my prediction from earlier. It's hard. Again, it's hard to know from both sides of what's going to show up on Saturday. Just real quick, because I want to bounce back to that. Uh, tiebreaker score tonight. Just need the, if you want to give the full score, you can. But we specifically need the Texas Tech side for the tiebreaker. I'm gonna say 86. What did Justin go with? 92. 92. 92. Man. Um. I'll give you a little leeway. Um, 88. Dang it. 93. <laughs> Yeah, that's just, that's what you have to go with. You have to go with that. I, I, I don't. They haven't. They played. Da- when did they play Dallas? Uh, Dallas Christian or something like that. In there, Northwestern North State. State. I have no idea yeah. what they've done before this. Um, have not looked. Yeah. Uh, I don't, don't want to go. I don't want to go too high. It probably is going to be a hundred and something though. If they shoot like they did, they yeah. won ninety six to fifty five. Yeah. So let me let me bounce back to what we were just talking about there, and uh, let me ask you this, David Collier. Who are you gonna call your Ghostbusters? Uh, would it be better if you had the choice? Do you think it would be better for Texas Tech if it was something to a to the effect of an ugly lower twenties game or a higher mid forties? Think, low 40s, mid 40s. I think a lower game because mm-hmm. that means you're running the football. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're if, if it's – well, I think they're they're not going to slow things down. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked at it. It, it. It's surprising they don't have as many big touchdown plays as I thought. I think they have eight, nine of 35 or more. Mm-hmm. Um, which you think up with them, you know, hey, we're going to break, break a long touchdown run, and maybe they just leave it short. Uh, I certainly remember Travis Hunter having one. Uh, what game was it? Uh, it might have been the UCF game that mm-hmm. he was down at like the three, and it was still like a 35-yard play. Yeah. But I visited with a guy from the paper there in Boulder, and he said that they're capable of long sustained drive, which if they can do that, more power to them. But I, I picture them as a – big play team and if they're doing big plays we're not gonna you're not gonna win in the 30s or the 40s you know i mean you're mm-hmm. so i think the red raiders want to keep that offense off the field those four wide receivers all of which could pose a problem i think if it's a lower scoring game the red raiders are in better shape i would i would agree with you and i would add on to with what you're saying i think it means that you have found a way to disrupt timing of Colorado's offense with mm-hmm. pressure because that's that's been the recipe because they just – I want to just confirm and say that they can't run the football, but it's not even that. They don't run they, the football. Like, they can't. They, they, they know what they're good yeah, at, yeah. and they are truly one-dimensional. And so, usually that's a bad thing, but there's a reason why they're 6-2, and two, and on one of those – 
of the two, it could have went either way with Kansas State making a couple, just like two more plays yeah. there at the end of the game than what Colorado did. And so can you take what you've learned? Because I think what we saw last week against Iowa State defensively was the most well put together full game from either side of the ball that we've seen your defense played a full four four quarters the offense nor the defense had done that yet Um, but I think we saw signs of that going back to TCU where in the second and third quarter you were disrupting Hoover you were causing all sorts of pressure and you had bounced back from two explosive touchdowns to use that again there early and settled down and started to do things that we haven't seen very much this year, like winning some one-on-one battles at the line of scrimmage uh, with like Harvey Dyson and then hitting more consistently on blitzes and looking a little bit too like, I know Arizona's offense isn't great, but looking closer to the defensive performance you had against Arizona. And then so you added all that together where you did that for four quarters and then you added on that Jacob Rodriguez put on a Superman cape another time this year and just had... Well, I keep on saying the game of his life, but he's had like two or three this year where he's yeah. that. And we all know how good he can be. And so it was like, you know, you're going to have a consistent performance, to me at least, uh, from the linebackers. They're going to have anywhere between a B grade to an A plus grade. Jacob Rodriguez played outstanding, but mm-hmm. your line, Dingle played well. Ben Roberts played well and all of those together. When you start adding in, oh, we're 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 in the backfield now with our defensive line? Okay, well, you can start to cause havoc with that, and that's what you need against the Buffaloes because Sanders isn't – he's not one that's going to create time to take off and just scamper down the field. I mean, he can if he wants to, but he's creating time because he's looking down the field and he wants to see if that secondary is going to hold up. And can can on the back end, if you're not getting there, if you're not getting home, obviously the question then looks at the defensive backs who – have left you wanting at times. That's a nice way to put it. And so can they can they hold up on their end? And that and that's the question of can you take some of the stuff you figured out last week against a very different offense too. That's the other thing. Iowa State and Colorado are probably the two most polar yeah. opposite offenses in the in the conference. Um can you take steps from what you saw last week? Yeah. I think you can. Well, and, and you you spoke to it the fact that he likes to. I mean, they've been sacked some, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he's one of those. He I think he has six interceptions, so mm-hmm. well, one more than Baron, Baron has five, right? Um, mm-hmm. But he's more likely to take a sack than he is to throw the ball away. So if you, you know, if you can get to him and not hurt him, but you know, rattle him, speed him up, that's probably your best way to do things. Because I was surprised when I looked this up. Do you know where he ranks in the country in completion percentage? You would think, I mean, as much as they throw the football, mm-hmm. it's not great. Mm-hmm. Barron's 61. Mm-hmm. Tyler Shuck is 51. <laughs> um, I Sorry, they were just on the same just page together. That just it was, it, well, it was, just, it was right there on All the right. same page because we had this conversation earlier this week how similar those two guys are. Shadur Sanders is number two in the nation in completion percentage. Yeah. He's He's incredibly efficient. And you know what you said, like uh, – we think of Colorado and all of these explosive plays, yeah. but they can sustain drives. They're really good on third down, yeah. like really good on third down. Yeah. And so that's where I think uh, – I'm going to go into coach speak. Obviously, yeah. you have to win first and second down yeah. here to put them in hopefully adverse situations on third down and then hit home on those. Um, again, I go back to do you see the defense that showed up in Ames? Different scheme, different uh, – play style but from what you did on the field and what you did well can you improve on that because you're still going to need to do that and then obviously you have to look at the offense and go are you playing more consistently because you're going to need still need to put up points like if you're not in the 30s i don't feel great. even asking that high scoring low scoring game yeah it's just a fun little game there if you're not in the 30s offensively i don't think it'll matter and that and that can be still a decent day from the defense and still need to score in the 30s yeah, to me, I'll, I would much prefer that they score in the 30s. Trust me, I feel much better mm-hmm. about the whole situation. Let us know what you think on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. It is the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Oh man, you uh, you you've lost me. <laughs> you you've lost me. <laughs> <for the> next. <laughs> I couldn't get through. That was a long break. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's been a 
enjoyable time with you as always. Thanks for letting me fill in today here on the end of the bench. Clint Scott, David Collier, Lucas White, we've got Diego back there hanging out and uh, taking care of us. Uh, it is time for Ask the Bench Warmers. <laughs> Some have called it Ask the Inch Warmers. <laughs> I don't know who. As they should. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, give us your questions on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. The bottom line uh, will follow us here at noon, right here on 100.7 The Score. Don't forget about Optimum Game Day Live tomorrow, 7 o'clock. The uh, biggest hosted show on site out there. On the corner. There's no other competition. Right yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right corner Lamar, right? from uh, Jones Stadium. Yeah. But, uh, but, but seriously, if you're out and about, you're in the big noon kickoff crowd. If you're in the yin-yang crowd... If you want to come by, come say hi. We'll be out there for an hour up until kickoff. You excited about Yin Yang Twins? Uh, I know. I, I probably know a Yin Yang Twins song, maybe. Mm-hmm. Do I? I'm asking you guys. Wait till you see uh, Optimum Game Day Live. Do I don't know? I don't know any. Yeah. Oh, me neither. Yeah. I didn't okay. even know they were a duo. So. <laughs> are, you being, are you guys kidding? I probably do know the song, but like I... Like Shake It Like a Salt Shaker? Maybe. I, I, I generally I would have to hear it. I don't know. I'm going to play it. I'm, never mind. No. I bet you guys know. Oh, you, I'm I bet sure you guys I do. Know more I know who the Ying Yang Twins are, so I'm uh-huh. assume, assuming I probably know the song, but probably need a clean version. So, well, I'm not going to play it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, say ay ay ay. There was another one. They had one uh, called Nagin. I was trying to uh, think of. The one that they are with little little John. Where would you rank them in comparison to when, Wham? Uh, is the one with the East Side East Side Boys to the wall. Uh, this oh, I know that one. Yeah. Rank yeah, get low. There we go. Yeah, yeah thank you on the chat line. <laughs> <laughs> Probably shouldn't have kept singing that one until I <laughs> got to where I was going. Yeah. That was uh, peak high school for me, fellas. Yeah. That's in the – what's the movie with Ryan Reynolds and uh, Sandra Bullock? He's Canadian, and oh, the the, the that. proposal, right? Yeah, that's yeah. In, that's what's in that. Yeah, <laughs> Betty White sings it. I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah. I've never actually. She's seen out it. in the woods, and Sandra Bullock's singing it. But I think Betty White joined in. Boy, this is taking a turn. <laughs> <laughs> Team Money has to shake it like a salt shaker, a direct rip off of shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture. No, I think it's uh, different. Uh. Bullfighter said, Inchwarmers, <laughs> if you could bring a sports celebrity to sit with y'all tomorrow, would y'all want? Specifically a sports celebrity? I don't know. Mm. We might be able to pick one from the other sideline. Just go hang out. I really, them. I'm legitimately interested to see who all shows up in the Jones. Because I, I know that they have like a traveling just cavalcade of who's who. And, oh, they're here in, this, in road games, home games. So, uh, for me personally, sports celebrity... I mean, Tony Gonzalez is still my my favorite all-time athlete. Alex Gordon could be in that mix, too. I know they're probably not, like, the most exciting names, but for me, I would be pumped if they were sitting there. Um, If I went retired, guys. If I could just go sit by Dion, that would be cool. I've mentioned I'm not necessarily the hugest. uh, Hugest. Hugest? Hugest. The most huge. Hugest. Hugest. Um Dion, the coach fan, but I was a big fan of him as an athlete. Mm-hmm. So if I could hang out over there on the sideline, that would be mm-hmm. cool. Uh, Bo Jackson would probably be another one. I don't know that Bo is probably the most exciting or entertaining person to hang out with, but if I could just sit there and watch a football game with him, I'm not going to pass that up. I mean, I would love it to be like you know, like Patrick Mahomes or Andy Reid, but I'd be afraid I Bumble would. Bumble Ruski. <laughs> Bumble Ruski, dude. <laughs> now you do it. Dude, he's so good in those. Andy Reid's. He's he's been the best part of those commercials. He's so funny. Uh <laughs> Fumbleruski, Fumbleruski. Sorry. Yeah. Oh man. Lucas is Shiny like, light. Just, you just four more minutes, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going forever. Never go to the ending, Lucas. Uh All right, I, if, if I had you. one of those guys, I'd be like the other guys that I picked are retired, so they can't leave like the team. Yeah. I would be afraid to be like, okay, well, actually we're not gonna be a part of the Chiefs anymore if you're a fan. <laughs> <laughs> you scared us away. Uh, this from Razzle Dazzle. 
Uh, I may just skip the big noon kickoff stuff and just stand directly in front of you guys with a massive sign. <laughs> Please do. That'd be awesome. Uh, this on the H Flooring Center chat line, Juan said, even if the Cowboys tank and they get a high draft pick, who can they afford after that ridiculous contract they gave back? Well, the nice thing is, I guess, you know, whoever they're drafting with that. Yeah, I got to really nail it, yeah. but you're going rookie contract right. there. Yes. Uh, this on the chat line, there's no way technical keeps it within <laughs> three and a half with our skill players. Travis Hunter will go off. Sco buffs. Good luck to you. That sounds like a, a robot type that. <clears throat> well, you read it like a robot, oh. though. <laughs> Sco buffs. <laughs> There is no way technical keeps up. <laughs> technical. <laughs> Three and a half points with our skill set. Uh, this on the chat line. Uh, <laughs> Shelly said, inchworms. What <laughs> would it take to get Collier doing the worm down the Raymar hallway on next week's take three? Oh, I, Can you I, do the worm? I think most people would probably do the worm, right? I think there's people that think they can, can do, do the, worm. the worm yeah yeah i think well here we go put, put me in that category i think i could do the worm will i do it on camera absolutely not what about off camera yeah maybe Ooh, ooh, punishment the worm on camera sure yeah that's a doable one yeah. i'll do that too okay i'll put that one on my wheel there we go yeah what all do we have floating around on the wheel since now that i'm it's all I've the stuff again. that's the funny thing it's all the stuff that we put you on the wheel we took the taser off because we absolutely refuse to do the Soft. taser thing <laughs> I actually was thinking about that this morning when I was going through like the show, and I was like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, we'll you know, we'll have to pick him today. It's a Friday. Uh, that means there's the wheel. It's like, oh, I was on the wheel last time. It's like, oh yeah, there was a taser. Yeah, look, and, and, <laughs> and I started thinking about it's on there. <laughs> it's just, I was thinking more about the taser, and I was like, that was probably a bad decision. But I already said that I would keep it on the wheel. Yep. So we'll put it back on for you whenever you lose and fill in at some point. I mean, I don't have very many brain cells anyway, so who cares? <laughs> Just knock out the last three. Uh, this on the uh, chat line, sometimes I wish we had a camera on <laughs> Lucas to see his facial reactions. I have been pitching the producer cam, like, for a year now. Yeah. And just, like, we can do it like one of those where – was it uh, – you know, like on college game, they it felt like they used to for a while. Or maybe it's Fox Big Noon kickoff. Who was the guy that was his nickname was the Bear, and he was like the betting guy. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they would have it where you'd have the panel, right? Mm-hmm. And then he would just be in the corner, and they would be doing that. Like it wouldn't be there the whole time. Um, I I would want this one the whole time, but he would like pop up at times like that. Yeah, you would need a director yeah. to do this whole thing. I think the best I'm way on to it. do it is we would just need a graphic. Uh, this is way inside baseball. We need a graphic and then have two boxes. You could be a little small box on the side, and then we could have a little sponsor right underneath it if anybody wants to sponsor the Lucas camera. Lup- Lucas reaction cam. Is Radio Shack still in business? I think so, yeah. The Radio Shack producer <laughs> cam. <laughs> yeah, take that, Chuck Hines. <laughs> we're we're, all, we're we, out there selling. Yeah, we just sold something. Excuse me, have you heard of the Inchwormers? <laughs> uh, we have a product to sell. Get get out. <laughs> this is Ridgely. I'm George Michael Michaels. <laughs> you might Michael know what's better as Double Whammy, Double. our in-ring performer name. Uh, all right, real quick. We already gave our scores out earlier in our predictions. What needs to go right for a win tomorrow? Uh, if you can get a couple of turnovers, I know that's the easy one, but he's only thrown six. Uh Maybe a defensive score that would that mm-hmm. would probably help things out. Um, that's I know I know turnovers is the easiest way, but you've done it against Arizona, you've done it against Iowa State teams that you didn't think were going to turn the ball over mm-hmm. that much, and that it, it worked out there. Can I can I raise you one? You raise if, me too. And when, if you get turnovers. You Please take score. advantage of saying. them. In this Look, one, that's... I don't think you can do. That's something against Iowa State that I don't think you can do this week. If you do get turnovers, you can't just give them the ball back. That's why I kind of added the uh, qualifier of maybe score on one of them. Yeah. Just to, this, you don't just take just out do part the, of the equation. Yeah. 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 Uh, this win here, got to win in the trenches, win the turnover battle and all the other cliches. I agree. They're cliches because they work. They work, When yes. you win them. Yeah. Uh, that'll do it for us, fellas. Had a good time. 
we're going to go uh, to our next match. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Lucas, for Diego, for David Zabransky, we will see you on Monday. <laughs> Just like that, there went his smile. <laughs> the bottom line coming up next. Jitterbug. <laughs> This has been the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 107thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.